Hi, my name is Tim Chow. I'm a resident here at the University of South Florida. And today we're going to talk about transfusions and transfusion reactions. Our goals or objectives for today are to first learn to identify the different types of transfusion reactions from the time that we first become concerned about a patient. We're going to learn to initiate a response to these types of transfusion reactions. And we're also going to learn about the stability of patients who are getting transfusion reactions and learn when to call or who to call for help when we're worried about a patient being unstable. To start, as soon as we're notified um, about a patient who's getting a transfusion, about a change in their status or a concern that they or a nurse may have, the first thing I do is I review the patient information. I want to know who my patient is, why they're here in the hospital, what comorbidities they might have, what we're doing for them in the hospital, why we're transfusing them, and what are our goals with transfusing them. Getting this baseline understanding helps me uh, make an assessment into what might be going on with the patient. If I'm worried about a transfusion reaction, regardless of how good or not good the patient sounds over the phone, I want to make sure that I'm seeing the patient. Again, this is all about getting more information on our patient. By seeing the patient, talking to the patient, and understanding what they may be experiencing or feeling, getting a physical exam on this patient, and talking to the nurse who's caring for the patient and what they may have seen change, I gain as much information as I can. Again, I'm making an assessment about what could be going on with my patient and how I can best respond. While doing this, I'm also thinking about the stability of the patient. I want to know as soon as I see this patient and as I'm evaluating this patient, is this patient stable or not? In patients that are getting transfused and that I'm concerned about a transfusion reaction, things that I think about in terms of their stability have largely to do with their vital signs and how they're feeling. Are they hypotensive? Are they tachycardic? Is this new for them? Are they hypoxic? Are they working to breathe? Do they have increased work of breathing? Are they feeling in pain? Or are they having a change in neurologic status? These are all things that I think about in evaluating their stability. Um, if they're decompensating and don't look stable, I always stop the transfusion. This might not be why that they are unstable. This might not be what's driving what's going on right now for this patient. But by stopping the transfusion, I eliminate additional variables that could be impacting what's going on with my patient. If they're truly unstable, I want to know that I can call for help. Um, even though I'm covering this patient overnight and I'm worried about their stability, um, I want to make sure that I'm asking for help, um, especially if I feel that this patient is going to the people that I can ask for help overnight are any seniors who might be in-house overnight, uh, any ICU fellows or attendants who could be in-house. And if I'm very acutely worried about them, uh, I always feel comfortable calling for an MRT or for a code if this patient is acutely decompensating. If the patient is stable, I still consider stopping the transfusion, just like patients who are unstable, and I'm active to uh, control the variables so that I can make an assessment and respond to my by stopping the transfusion, again, I'm controlling what's going on. It might not be what's causing uh, the change in the patient, but by stopping the transfusion or considering stopping the transfusion, um, I give myself a chance to make as best of an assessment and response as I can. When I start thinking about my assessment, uh, taking all the information that I gained by reviewing the patient information, seeing the patient, uh, talking to the patient, and examining them, talking to the nurses who are caring for the patient, um, when I'm making that assessment, First, think about the things that I can't miss, the things that are very uh, toxic and uh, potentially dangerous to the patient that could cause death. Um, I think about uh, acute hemolytic reactions, delayed hemolytic reactions, PACO, the trolley, and I'll also think about anaphylaxis in these patients. Um, acute hemolytic reactions occur typically when the patient receives the wrong type of blood product. This is very rare um, when there's an AVO incompatibility. This will happen very acutely, almost instantaneously for these patients. They're going to feel quite clean. They're going to feel feverish. Uh, they're not going to feel well. I want to evaluate um, the hemolysis that's going on in these patients. But again, this is pretty rare uh, given the electronic systems that are in place to prevent uh, patients from receiving the wrong blood products. I also uh, should consider delayed hemolytic reactions. But again, this is quite rare in patients, especially in the inpatient setting as this takes roughly two weeks for patients to develop a delayed hemolytic reaction for transfusion. 
Also uh, on my list that can't miss things are TACO and TALI. Uh, TACO stands for Transfusion Associated Cardiogenic Overload. I'm very concerned about these patients um, who have heart failure and are getting transfusions, or even patients who don't have heart failure um, who are getting large amounts of transfusions. Essentially what happens in TACO um, is they become volume overloaded and they could have increased work of breathing. Um, they'll just tire out. And this happens typically within the first couple hours, up to six hours after transfusions. My response to TACO is to give diuretics and stop the transfusion. Uh, something to note is patients with TACO and trolley are at very high risk of developing uh, TACO and trolley again in the future with future transfusions. And so I want to make sure that you know, if they've had this in the past, that we consider pre-treatment. Oftentimes we'll see patients get pre-treated with diuretics for TACO, and for trolley, sometimes they'll get pre-treated with antihistamines or steroids. Trolley stands for transfusion related acute lung injury. And the pathogenesis of this is basically a reaction between the blood product and uh, receptors within the lungs. They get a non-cardiogenic um, pulmonary edema on their chest x-ray, whereas TACO patients have a cardiogenic edema, um, but their chest x-rays may look similar. Um, but for trolley patients, again, we're stopping the transfusion, and our response is to also call for help and uh, treat with uh, steroids or even but the most common reaction um, for patients getting uh, transfused is an allergic response or a response to the cytokines in the blood products that they're receiving. Um, while transfusion reactions in general are very not common, uh, the most common to think about is this uh, reaction to the cytokines. These patients can be treated with antipyretics such as acetaminophen, antihistamines, or even sometimes steroids. So if, they, if I suspect an allergy or allergic response or response to the cytokines. If I stop the transfusion and I treat them and they respond very well, and this is what I suspect is causing the change in the patient. Um, if they still have a transfusion week and they've responded well and they're stable, and I'll continue that transfusion on them and just monitor very closely if they need it. But for the rest of these reactions, I typically will not stop the transfusion. I will stop the transfusion and I'm calling for help in addition to my initial response to these reactions. So to summarize, you know, today we talked about identifying the different types of transfusion reactions. We talked about our initial response to these transfusion reactions and considering if these patients are stable or not stable, how we respond. We also learned about who and when uh, to call for help with patients that we're concerned about that are receiving transfusion.